There's this jelly roll. Somebody save me. Then there's this jelly roll. And there's this jelly roll. For today, we're going to focus on the first two. Jelly Roll, two words. The Grammy-nominated country music superstar, whose real name is Jason DeFord, is being sued by Jelly Roll, one word, a Pennsylvania-based wedding band for alleged trademark infringement. First of all, before we go any deeper, let's clarify something in case you are not an intellectual property expert. Like, say, a law professor? This is a trademark case, not a copyright one. But let's say you are a law professor, like Professor Donald Harris of Temple University, maybe you can explain the difference between the two as only an expert can. Trademark is, is a source identifier. That's what it protects. Um, if you have a mark, it identifies the source from which the, the products or services, the goods or services come from. If it doesn't have this source identif identification feature, then we don't protect it. Uh, copyrights, we're protecting literary and artistic works and we're protecting the author's right to to exploit those works. So two different things. Uh, one is talking about creativity. One is talking about brand or source identification. Quick plug. If you are interested in copyright, our own Simone Del Rosario has an in-depth report at SAN.com on what's been going on with copyright law lately. But now, let's get back to trademarks. In Jelly Roll v. Jelly Roll, the band, which has performed for weddings and big events along the East Coast, including for President George W. Bush at the White House, says it has been using the name Jelly Roll since 1980, obtained a trademark in 2010, and renewed it in 2019. In this case, uh, Jelly Roll, Jelly Roll the band, has got a mark for that name for their services, for their entertainment services, singing and live music in a band. Um, and their claim is that that serves as a source identifier and that someone else coming in and using it now is going to confuse consumers. And so the test for infringement is likelihood of confusion. Are consumers likely to be confused when someone else is using the mark and be confused as to the source that it's actually coming from the actual mark owner? The suit points to the singer being born in 1984, four years after the band started using the name and says the singer didn't start using the name Jelly Roll, a nickname given to him as a child by his mother, professionally until 2010, the same year the band got its trademark. The band claims the singer's infringement of the mark is creating confusion in the marketplace. But remember, it's about likelihood of confusion, not actual confusion. Confused? Um, Professor Harris? The one thing that I will note, though, is that what we're what you need to show is not actual confusion, just a, a likelihood that consumers are going to be confused. And so most courts have most courts use a multi-factor test to determine whether there's likelihood of confusion. You look at things such as the similarity of the names, the similarity of the goods, the sophistication of the consumers, um, whether they are in the same market, whether there's any bad faith a number of different factors to determine this likelihood of confusion. One place the band says the singer is infringing on its business, Google searches. The band saying search results have changed, where years ago the band would top the list. Now you have to scroll through roughly 20 links to get to one about the band, with the singer taking top billing. Harris says this evidence falls under the suit's claim of dilution. The concept with dilution is that someone else is now using the mark and it's not actually going to, it's not likely to confuse consumers, but now we're no longer going to be able to bring to mind just one jelly roll. And, and so we're diluting the significance of the original mark. And, and I think that that's where they're going with that. I think that's also going to be a really tough cause of action to prove because in order to have a dilution cause of action, you have to prove that your mark is famous. And, and it's not fame just in a geographic niche. You have to be famous across the country. And, and I'm not sure that Jelly Roll, the band, can prove that kind of fame. This is just one of the latest trademark cases that hit the music industry in recent years. In 2020, a singer by the name Anita Lady A. White got into a dispute with the band Lady A, who had just changed its name that year. Said I wouldn't come, but I lost all control and I need you now. Both parties suing one another and then eventually reaching a settlement. But one particular part of the band suit is worth noting here. 
as the band claimed the singer never challenged the trademark before 2020, even though the band had been using Lady A as a nickname. It's this argument of timing that could be on the side of Jelly Roll, the singer, too. It's this idea of latches. It's it's an idea that that you you could have enforced your rights a lot earlier, and instead you waited. And so there's an unreasonable delay before enforcing your rights, and that unreasonable delay resulted in an unfair prejudice to, in this case, the singer. And just weeks after the Jelly Roll dispute made headlines, the singer Pink filed legal action against Pharrell Williams, claiming his plans to register a trademark for the term P. Inc. would cause confusion and damage her business. She registered her trademark in 2001. In the suit, Pink's attorneys say she and Pharrell provide goods and services that are identical and are closely related, and that Pharrell is likely to market and promote his goods through the same channels of trade and to the same consumers as Pink. Pharrell's team has said P. Inc. would be used for his business of promoting marketing services in the field of music. But it's not always singer versus singer or band versus band when it comes to trademark fights in the music realm. In fact, Pharrell already faced legal action about his P. Inc. trademark a month before Pink came into the picture. And it wasn't from another singer. No, it was from Victoria's Secret. Yes, that Victoria's Secret, who also claimed consumers could be confused since the retailer has been using the term pink in its clothing line for decades. In its suit, Victoria's Secret says Pharrell's trademark is highly similar to and is the phonetic equivalent of its pink marks. So a clothing company filing a lawsuit against a singer is not out of the scope of possibility when it comes to trademark quarrels involving the music biz. And neither is a serial brand suing a band. Yes, that happened too. You see, in 2022, the marketers at Post created a line of cereal products, portable cups of some of its most sought-after selections, like Honey Bunches of Oats and Fruity Pebbles, named them OK Go, and thought the company had a hit on its hands. What they didn't realize was members of the band OK Go, who had several hits on their hands, were not pleased. Their attorney sent Post a cease and desist letter, saying the cereal's new line would, quote, suggest to consumers that OK Go is endorsing Post products. A likelihood of confusion. An attorney for Post disagreed, saying rock music and breakfast cereal were clearly unrelated, and OK Go was a common term used by many other companies. The dispute led to Post filing suit against the band, after the cereal maker said it had offered to pay OK Go to resolve the issue without litigation, despite the cereal company not finding any merit in the band's argument. Post said OK Go the band rejected its offer, made no counteroffer, and that led the company to have no other choice but to file the lawsuit. OK Go vowed to fight the big corporation, but a few months later both parties reached a confidential settlement. The band releasing a statement saying Post agreed to withdraw its application to register OK Go as a trademark. When it comes to trademark lawsuits, Professor Harris says it is much more difficult for the suing party to claim that likelihood of confusion when the alleged violator is in a totally different industry. The two factors that play the biggest role are how similar the marks are and, and then how similar the products are. So if you have someone using OK Go for a band and someone using OK Go for a cereal, are consumers really likely to believe that they're coming from the same source? Uh, the unlikely. But if you have Jelly Roll and band and Jelly Roll a singer, you know, now they're both in entertainment. Now they're both singing. Now it's both about music. They're using the exact same name. And, and it seems to, it, to me, again, much more likely that consumers are likely to be confused here as opposed to using the exact same name on widely different products or services. So, will the Jelly Roll and Pink lawsuits follow the same tune as the Lady A and OK Go battles with settlements? Professor Harris says most cases usually do settle, which could be music to the ears of all parties involved.